Welcome scientists, it's Gisa from Butterfly Garden. It looks like our magic door is open again today. Who do you think may be visiting today? I'll give you a hint. Our story is called Seahorses and Sea Dragons, written by Mary Jo Rhodes and David Hall, and the photographs are by David Hall. Imagine a creature with the head of a horse and the tail of a monkey. This creature is almost invisible to its enemies. It sucks in food like a vacuum cleaner. It also grows plants on its back. The creature you just imagined is a real life animal called a seahorse. A seahorse is a fish. Like other fish, seahorses live in water and breathes with gills. It also has fins and a backbone. Seahorses are different from other fish in some ways too. Most are covered with scales. Scales are hard plates that protect the body. Seahorses don't have scales. Instead, they have tough skin that covers an outer skeleton. The skeleton is made up of bony plates and rings. Seahorses come in different sizes. They can be as small as a fly or as large as the size of a robin. Seahorses are part of a family of fish called Synathidae. The other members of this family are sea dragons, pipe fishes, and pipe horses. Synathidae means fused jaw in Greek. All of these animals have jaws that are joined together or fused to form a long snout. Sea dragons are some of the strangest looking fish in the sea. Skin growths that look like branching seaweed sprout from their bodies. Sea dragons are larger than seahorses. The ideal seahorse habitat has lots of things that seahorses can wrap their tails around. Seahorses also need to have a steady current of water. This current helps bring prey close enough to be sucked in easily. In tropical seas, seahorses might be found in places with soft coral or in sponge gardens. Many seahorses and pipe fishes live in or near seagrass beds. These are underwater meadows found in muddy or sandy seas. In cooler water, seahorses and sea dragons sometimes live in an underwater forest of kelp. Kelp is a type of seaweed. Sea dragons live only in kelp forests along the southern coast of Australia. Imagine trying to swim while wearing a suit of armor. You might not be able to bend or move very freely. The bodies of seahorses and sea dragons are covered with a kind of bony armor. A fish cannot swim fast if it can't bend its body easily. There are also other reasons why seahorses and sea dragons are slow swimmers. Most other fish get extra swimming power from their large tail fins. When a fish swims, the tail fin whips from side to side. This movement helps to push the fish through the water. Seahorses are different. They swim in an upright position. They also have an appointed tail with no fin on the end. Their tails are good for holding on to things, but not for swimming. Seahorses and sea dragons have fins that are so thin you can see right through them. The dorsal fin is located in the animal's back. It beats rapidly and pushes the seahorse or sea dragon forward. When the animal is not swimming, its fins are folded tightly against its body and are difficult to see. A pair of pectoral fins stick out from the sides of a seahorse or sea dragon's head. These fins help the animal to balance and steer. Because their fins are almost invisible, seahorses and sea dragons appear to swim as if by magic. Seahorses may be slow, but they are skilled swimmers. They can move forward and backward. They can steer with great control. They can also turn easily around a single blade of grass. Seahorses will even ride an underwater current to get someplace more quickly. Seahorses can change skin color to match their surroundings. This is a form of camouflage. They may become brown to blend in with mangrove roots or they might turn yellowish green like seaweed. Others may become orange or red like nearby sponge. Seahorses are able to change color because of special cells in their skin. These cells contain tiny sacs of color pigment. 
different mixtures of these pigments can make many shades and patterns. Seahorses also have other ways to camouflage themselves. Some seahorses grow long strands of skin that look like branching seaweed. A pot-bellied seahorse can grow long strands of skin to hide among seaweed branches. Other seahorses have tiny plants called algae growing on their skin. This gives them a fuzzy appearance and helps them hide from predators. The behavior of leafy sea dragons adds to their camouflage shape and color. They usually sway back and forth with the ocean waves, just like the nearby sweet seaweeds. When a predator comes close, a sea dragon will turn and face away. This makes the animal even harder to recognize. The leafy sea dragon is one of the most perfectly camouflaged fish in the sea. Seahorses and sea dragons are predators. They suck in their prey through their long snouts. They don't have teeth or movable jaws, so they must swallow their prey whole. Seahorses and sea dragons feed on zooplankton. These are very small animals that drift with the ocean currents. Seahorses may also become prey, but they are usually very well hidden. Most predators swim by without noticing them. Also, their bony bodies are not a tasty meal for most animals. But seahorses, especially young ones, are eaten by some animals. Both seahorses and pipe fishes have been found in the stomachs of flounders and other bottom-dwelling fish. Can a father be a mother? The answer is yes, if the father is a seahorse. This may sound strange. Usually only female animals give birth, but seahorses and sea dragons are different. It is the male, not the female, who gives birth to their young. The male and female seahorse greet one another every day at the same time. They may twirl around a blade of grass or swim together side by side for a while. This creates a strong bond between the seahorses. A few days later, the male's brood pouch, a small sack on the front of his body, fills with water. He pushes the water out, causing his pouch to open wide. The female can see that he is ready for her eggs. The pair then come together as the female directs her eggs into the male's pouch. Male seahorses carry and protect the eggs for several weeks. During this time, a baby seahorse develops and grows inside each egg. When the seahorses are fully grown, they will hatch out of the eggs while still inside the pouch. The babies then get pushed out one or two at a time. After they are born, baby seahorses are on their own. At first, they may drift with the ocean currents, but after a few weeks, they settle down on the sea bottom. Many young seahorses are eaten by other fish. In some cases, only one or two out of a thousand babies may survive to become adults. Sea dragon fathers do not have a special brood pouch. Instead, they have special skin underneath their tail called a brood patch. The female dragon attaches her eggs there and the male fertilizes them. He carries the eggs under his tail for several weeks until they hatch. Seahorses and sea dragons have lived in the ocean for millions of years. They have adapted to many changes in their surroundings, but like other animals, they face problems caused by humans. Some people in parts of the world believe that seahorses are useful in treating health problems. Millions of seahorses are caught each year and ground up into powder for making medicines. Some seahorses are also made into jewelry and other objects sold in stores. If you want to see live seahorses, sea dragons, and pipe fishes, you can visit a public aquarium. Many aquariums have special seahorse exhibits. Some aquariums also breed seahorses so that fewer need to be collected from the wild. Seahorses and sea dragons are special animals, but we need to protect them and their habitat. If we capture too many or destroy their habitats, there will be fewer left for everyone to enjoy. Are you ready to make a seahorse of your own? All right, friends, what you're going to need to do the seahorse craft is the outline of the seahorse that I included in your homework pocket. You just cut around it. You'll need a hole punch, acrylic paints in any color that you'd like, some shaving cream, and you'll need to cut a little bit of yarn. We're gonna, at the end, punch holes here and practice our tying. 
So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the shaving cream and you're going to cover your baking pan. All right, now you can, if you're going to do many of these, you can actually coat your whole pan. You don't really have to coat your whole pan with it. Um, now next, you're going to take different squirts of acrylic paint and just squirt it in there. Right on top of the shaving cream. All right, then you're going to take your seahorse pattern and gently push it down onto the paint. And you're going to lift it up. And I'm just going to stick it onto a piece of paper here. Now, if you want, you can just let it dry like this. Or I'm going to just take the bottom and kind of get that a little more saturated. Or you can take a squeegee and you can squeegee this off which will also um, marbleize it a little bit more. I'm just gonna let that dry for a second and then I'll show you the next step. So if you have a squeegee, which I don't, you can use a squeegee. If not, you can use a piece of cardboard and just scrape the paint and the shaving cream. And then you can take your hole punch and hole punch right where the holes are here. They may have gotten covered up a little bit by the paint. And you can take your little yarn, pieces of yarn, and make little ties. So this is a great fine motor skill as well. You can make your little yarn longer if you'd like. I cut mine pretty short. You, another idea too is you can use thicker paper. You can trace this seahorse template onto thicker like construction paper or a tag board or an old manila file. And there you have it, your own little seahorse. Have fun, remember to send me pictures.